Welcome to Annotating PDS Across Platforms. I'm Scott Dougherty, one of the Training and Consultation Coordinators in Assistive Technology at the Allegheny Intermediate Unit. You may reach me by email or my Twitter handle. The materials from today's presentation, including the slide deck and a number of resource documents, are available at the URL shown on screen. Once you land there at the shared Google Drive, look for the folder entitled Additional Resources and Webinars. That will contain a subfolder entitled Annotating PDFs Across Platforms, and you'll be able to find all of the resources there. Before we begin talking about document annotation tools, it's important to know that PDFs come in a couple different flavors, so to speak. Many schools are equipped with copy machines that will create a PDF image. Those tend to be formatted as image-only PDFs, so it's essentially just a picture of the page, either in color or grayscale, but a computer wouldn't recognize that there's actually any English or other language text on the page. PDFs with selectable text, on the other hand, have had something called optical character recognition, or OCR, done on. In addition to having an image of the paper, the computer also gets additional information and saves that in an underlying layer that tells it what the text on the page is. This allows us as users to select it with the mouse, to copy it, to paste it, to listen to it with text features in our programs. Accessible PDFs go the next level, and they actually have additional information about the document structure, about tables and images embedded into the file, and they're really the ones that will be the most useful to a variety of individuals. Accessible PDFs are designed to work with assistive technologies, so if there's users with visual impairments or deaf blindness, for example, they would be able to access the content in the PDF through their assistive technologies. The fourth type of PDF that most schools will deal with are secure PDFs. These are often the ones provided to you by publishing companies. If you have students who are served with a Section 504 agreement or with an individualized education plan, an IEP, the district can make a request to the publisher to have an accessible PDF provided. Secure PDFs end up blocking out many of the features that assistive technologies can use, preventing them from being accessible to the users who are trying to access them. With most publishers, they are now making forms available on their websites, so the request to get an accessible PDF is generally done online. It can, however, also be done as part of the purchasing process when you're ordering new curriculum. So one of the first tools we'll take a look at in terms of annotating PDFs are a free tool provided by Adobe Acrobat itself. The reader program actually has annotation features, but also text-to-speech. So this is a little extra information beyond just annotation. On screen, you're seeing the path that is used to activate the text-to-speech feature in a document. It's important to note that you'll need to go through these steps for each PDF that you open. The bolded text on screen is simply what you'll click on when you get into the Adobe Acrobat Reader program. In the event that you attempt turning on the text-to-speech feature, and you get an error message that it couldn't be configured, the yellow box on screen walks through some of the troubleshooting steps that you can take. Uh, sometimes when the reader is installed, this particular component doesn't install correctly or fully. If you are working for a school that manages your installations, however, it may be necessary to put in a help desk request in order to have a repair installation done. That's the last step generally, but it may be necessary for you to get some help from your technology office. Let's go ahead and take a look at this feature in Adobe Acrobat Reader. So we have this PDF open in Adobe Acrobat Reader. In the upper left-hand corner, I'm gonna click on the View menu 
and go down to read out loud to turn on this feature. As I said earlier, this needs to be done on a document by document basis when it's opened. So we'll go ahead and activate read out loud. It's the only option right now that's available to us. You'll note, as with every other program, if there are keyboard shortcuts for commonly used features, those also appear next to the menu item itself. So now that it's been activated, we need to go back into the view menu a second time. And when we choose read out loud, we see a couple more options now are available to us. Clicking on these, we'll read a single page or we'll read from the current placement to the end of the document. Falling water. Excerpted from http colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash falling water. Also within Adobe Acrobat Reader are a variety of comment tools. Generally, these open when the program is launched, but if you're not seeing them to the right hand side of your screen, you would simply click on View, Tools, and then select the comment group from the selections. If necessary, clicking open then will populate the controls on the right hand side of your screen. There's a number of tools available for markup. They're shown here in the image on this slide. The ones that are primarily used from left to right are probably the highlighter tool. This will allow you to highlight content on screen in selectable text. Along the right hand side of the toolbar are the settings for each tool. We could change the color or thickness of the highlighter by choosing the icons right here. Probably the most frequently used tool will be the text entry tool. Clicking on this T will allow you to then click anywhere on the document and insert text onto it. Again, the controls at the right side will allow you to change the color, font, and size of the text that's being entered. I have made use at times of the stamp tool, although it's probably not one of the most highly used ones. But this can be helpful for students who have difficulty typing as a result of their disability. They may fatigue from keyboard use or keyboarding may be laborious. For purposes of putting the name at the top of a paper, we can make use of the stamp tool to use an image of the student's name. And then rather than typing out all of those letters and fatiguing on the document identification part, the student can focus their energies and time on actually completing content on the file. And then the last group of tools that are probably most commonly used are the shape tools. When you click on that, it will display the options available to you to draw onto the screen. So this combination of these four tools will allow students to complete most of the tasks they would do with paper and pencil. Again, we'll switch over now to Adobe Acrobat Reader and take a look at those in action. So here on the right-hand side, we're seeing the variety of tools available within Adobe Acrobat. The commenting tool is the yellow option. When you click on that, it minimizes the tools to the right-hand side of the screen and populates a tool row at the top of the document. I'm going to go ahead and click the text tool here, and you'll notice the cursor changes to an I-beam with the letter A next to it. Now I simply click and can begin typing my name. Likewise, we can put in today's date. Selecting text allows us to change it with the panel that pops up here. So if you wanted to make changes to the font face or size or color, those controls are available by selecting the text that you've typed. Another important thing to point out is as you're using the comment tools, a comment panel appears by default on the right-hand side of the screen. This can be useful for people to quickly select material in the document. You'll notice if I click on an item in the panel, it's highlighted within the document itself. This can be a quick way to delete items. I select it in the panel and press delete on my keyboard. Or by selecting the menu option icon here, I can also delete that way. That can be particularly handy for examples like this where I've inserted a blank tool and trying to select it to delete it can be difficult. We would answer 
questions one through five with the same tool in the comment toolbar. Rather than doing those now, we'll take a look at the line tool or the shape tool, which would allow us to complete this matching activity. So I click on the shapes icon and select line from the choices. And now it's a matter of simply clicking on the start point and dragging to the end point. While this pencil tool in the toolbar would allow me to do the same thing, you'll end up with a much more ragged product generally, although Acrobat does apply some smoothing to it once it's released. Some students are thrown off by that jaggedness. They like the clean look of the line tool. So uh, you've got options on whether you would like to use the line tool in the shape group or the pencil. And we would just continue in a similar manner, selecting and clicking and dragging to show our choices in this matching activity. Finally, down at the bottom, we might make use of the text tool to type an answer on the provided line or we could make use of the highlighter tools to select text on screen, or we could use the oval or rectangle tools to indicate an answer in that manner. For students working in the Google Chrome environment, either through the browser or on a Chromebook, there are a variety of apps and extensions that allow for PDF annotation. One that I've found to be helpful is an app called Kami. If you access the slide deck from the link I showed earlier, you can click on Kami trial to be taken to the registration page for this particular tool. In the image shown on the right-hand side of the slide, you'll note some yellow locks on some of the tools on the left-hand side. Kami gives users a 30-day trial, which is fully functioning. At the end of that trial period, premium features are disabled, and that's what's indicated by the yellow locks. A teacher subscribing for a year, however, is given the ability to provide up to 150 students with codes so that the teacher's subscription would allow students designated by the teacher to make use of the full features of Kami to complete assignments. One that's particularly nice is the equation tool that allows for math and scientific notation on the PDF. If you're using a trial, however, and it expires after 30 days, a number of the tools still remain available for ongoing use. The annotation tools are among those. So just like we saw in Adobe Acrobat Reader, we can select the text box to click and place text on screen, we can select the shape tool to draw lines in the matching items, or we can select shapes to circle or box items on the page. The markup tool includes markers and highlighting features as well. You'll notice as you click on tools in this app, the settings are contained within the pop-up panel that appears for that particular tool. So here with the shapes, we can control the size, color, gradient of the of the line, square, circle, or triangle being created. So here we'll take a look at Kami in action. When a user goes into G Suite, Google Drive, or Google Classroom, they'll see PDFs listed potentially in their file. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the falling water example once again. And by default in Google, PDFs open up in this reader view. At the top center of the screen, you'll see an open with drop-down box. When you click that, any installed apps will be appearing. So Annotate with Kami and Lumen PDF are two of the tools I might use for annotation of a PDF. I'm going to go ahead and select Annotate with Kami, which will launch the PDF document in the app itself. This may take several seconds or up to a minute to load the page. You'll get an indication if you're using a trial version of the amount of time left. Because of coronavirus, they've actually extended their trial period to teachers at this time. As I mentioned earlier, we can select a text box, click on a space on the page, and type in an answer such as waterfall. Again, controls for the size of the text and the colors are available here. If there was math involved, 
an insert symbols option comes up allowing me to select or search for symbols within that tool. The drawing allows for freehand like we saw in the pencil tool earlier on. So again, this is going to be as pretty or not pretty as uh, your fine motor control and mouse or trackpad use allow. And then the shapes are used uh, most frequently for rectangles, ovals, and lines. The eraser tool allows you to select all annotations on the page or items on a case-by-case -case basis. Simply click and drag over the annotation to make them disappear. Finally, for users working on iPads in the iOS environment, there are a variety of apps available for PDF annotation on those systems. The one I've chosen to demonstrate here is Claro PDF Pro. This one's nice because it does allow a variety of sharing options. Students can save files locally on their iPad, but also connect to the iCloud Drive, Dropbox, or their Google accounts to access PDF files from their shared cloud-based systems. Once documents are annotated, students also have the ability to share via AirDrop, to send as mail, to send to a printer. So this particular app gives a lot of options for getting PDF documents into the device and also sharing them from the device. At the time of this recording, Claro PDF Pro was priced at about $15 for the app. This includes credits for 5,000 page conversions. So one of the features of this app is that it allows you to use the camera to capture paper documents and convert them to PDF. These conversion credits will allow you to perform OCR so that any print that's appearing on the printed page could potentially be converted into selectable and speakable text. I've had students using the initial purchase of Claro PDF Pro for a few years, and because most of their PDF documents come in from ways other than the camera, they're nowhere close to having expended those 5,000 credits. However, if you do find that's a feature you're using a lot, uh, an add-on does allow the purchase of additional conversion credits. We'll take a look now at the Claro PDF Pro app. This is a demonstration of the Claro PDF Pro app on iPad. Right now it's configured to sync with my Dropbox account. I selected a Compass Rose worksheet and I'm choosing the third icon at the top of the toolbar. This allows me to select the text tool and enter my name at the top. I just tap onto the screen and begin typing. Once the text entry is done, tapping around the box will display the handles to resize or rotate the text box. Then I can tap outside and use gestures to navigate down into the document. Here I'll tap on screen again to enter one of my answers. Since I was off a bit, again tapping and dragging on the box will allow me to reposition it. The lowest handle will allow for rotation of the box. Now I'm selecting a marker tool to scratch out the choice I made from the word bank. If I wanted to clear annotations, the eraser tool will allow me to clear individual ones by tapping on them or clear the entire page. The highlighter tool uh, first appeared in yellow. You'll notice settings for any tool selected on the right hand of the toolbar. In this case, we can change color, opacity, thickness. With the text tool, we could also change the font. And then the shape tool allows us to draw lines, circles, uh, other polygons. Again, with controls at the right end of the screen. Once the worksheet's complete, I can tap the share icon and select uh, one of several options. And then send it via AirDrop, print it, or use one of the saving options available. 
I hope you find the information presented in this webinar useful. Again, if you'd like to access the slide deck and additional resource materials, please visit bit.ly forward slash skips quick tips to access the shared Google Drive. I also have some quick recordings available at my YouTube channel, bit.ly forward slash skips quick videos. Have a great day.